right, I'm going to use a relatively big brush here. And I'm going to dip it, first of all, in some linseed oil. Get the brush wet. I'm going to dip it in a mixture of a dark color, which I've created. Same dark colors before. That's too oily. It's a mixture of, uh, I believe, three colors. Payne's Gray. Uh, burnt Umber and silly color. Oh, uh, Phthalo Blue. So I'm looking at my photograph. As always, my reference photo. And adding the dark areas. I'm noticing as I do this that I'm not really accurate on a bunch of the areas and that's okay I've done this scene a few times so I oh that's another little tip for you is that if you want to get good at something repetition is very very helpful one of the most powerful ways of learning so for example in this case I've taken many many photographs of this particular scene and I painted it I don't know how many times now, probably five or six. But I remember being told in art school and by a few other artists that if you really want to get good at something, paint the same thing multiple times because obviously you become more familiar with the subject. And I believe you can take it further and you understand it more each time you do it. So, you get a sense in this case of what works and what doesn't work and if you pay attention as you're painting you know does this have the same look and feel of these rocks and uh, you'll notice there are times when it does work and times when it doesn't the nice thing about working in oils of course is if it doesn't work you change it <laughs> i love working in oils if you haven't yet worked in oils um, the videos that I'm creating here should prove to be very helpful because there's really a lot of technique in how to control the medium, what brushes to use, how thin to make the paint, how to apply it, how to go in layers. Uh, all these little tricks that I've learned over the years, mostly from doing it. I, I, I'm always learning from other artists. I mean, for 25 years, I've been looking at the best artists in the world and then looking at my work and asking, continually asking myself, well, what makes that painting better than, you know, in this case, what makes Duffy Sheridan, a little plug for you, Duffy, the best portrait artist in the world, I believe, if there's such a thing. <laughs> anyway, so what, if I look, I'm doing a portrait and I want to really learn from a master, I'll work on a portrait and then look at Duffy's work and then look back at mine continually back and forth on my camera or whatever and ask myself what is it about his portraits that look better than mine in this case better i i you know i don't want to have to explain this every time but just so you know just more realistic why why are duffy's more realistic than mine of course there are many other elements that go into what would be considered a successful painting and not but just in terms of why did his look more real that's something that's that's relatively easy to to see the difference and and to master that skill of course we're continually working on other skills like composition and and uh, design and flow and feel and all the different elements that make that go into a good painting it is amazing how sometimes it's hard to talk and paint at the same time most of the time, it's not that hard, but... Okay, so, um, hopefully when I put this video up, I'll put a link or have the photo, the reference photo that I'm using with it. Because I, I believe it's very, very helpful in learning, obviously, to see what I'm doing. I'm really sticking probably 90% or more to the reference photo, as far as what I want to create. There are many small, subtle differences in what I'm doing but for the most part I'm using this photo which I love which I took um, to do this painting 
Okay, I'm continually looking for any place in here where I could use this dark shade. And let's see, I'll give I'll give you some examples of what to do with detail work here. I'm going to dip with this little liner brush, a real teeny uh, point at the end, which I love this brush. It's not expensive either. Let's see, the brand is Princeton Art. It's a liner, which are the long, skinny brushes, but liners are are really the I think the best brush to use for uh, doing a lot of detail because they come to a point very easily. Okay, I'm going to move my canvas over a little bit here. See if this is in the screen without. Okay, let me show you how I do uh, some detail work with this liner. I love using the small stick setup. It tends to work if you have, for example, let's say I got five lines here that are, you know, six inches long. Rather than going all across one line, I find it, for whatever reason, easier to do short little um, movements. I think the paint just tends to go on the canvas better for some reason. I'm not totally sure why and what the physics of that is. That does tend to be true. Now the the really the to master painting realistically with anything is look very, very carefully at your reference. You should be spending more time looking at your reference just about then you're doing looking at your canvas because if you look carefully for example all of these lines in this particular example are not even they're all varied and unless I look carefully I'm gonna make them all the same which tends to make the painting look contrived or a little bit phony and and if you want to look at your painting and be honest with yourself Look at a painting that you're doing and then look at one of the, you know, an artist that's more advanced than you. And hopefully it's the same kind of subject. If you can find that, that's awesome. So, for example, you could uh, just to learn how to paint rocks, you could, and you're welcome to do this, take this photograph that I'm doing and do your version of it, do a copy of it. And then as you're going along, look at your painting and then look at the one I'm doing. You know, I'm assuming that you're you're not as advanced at as advanced a stage as I am right now. Um, and and continually look at my painting and your painting and back and forth and see what is it that makes this one better. I'm always doing that with artists that are more advanced than I am. And you know, once you get over the like I believe there's always there will be always artists that are better than you. That's the nature of life. They're always people that are more advanced than you are at something. And you have to learn to be honest with yourself, not as a criticism, but as a simple um, opportunity to learn how to master your craft. So notice, okay, well, this artist is more advanced than me. He can do more realistic rocks. Why? What is it about his rocks that look more real? One of the things you'll notice is that we all have a tendency, I do this all the time myself, is to sim not simplify isn't necessarily the word, but to, you, you know, you're going along painting rocks and something looks really cool. So let's say you got real dark underneath this particular ledge. Oh, that looks really neat. So I'm going to do that again and again and again. And all of a sudden you have 10 rocks that look exactly the same. Well, rocks aren't exactly the same. There's variation with every single rock. So really paying attention to how they differ and change so that when you're doing in this case the shadows underneath each of these little shelves you don't make them look all the same and continually you have to look at your painting and the reference photo to see what is it about the rocks in the photograph that are um that are different than mine mine don't look like them what 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 is the difference and look carefully scan an area like get an overall look and feel and notice what looks phony. What does not look real? Always looking at what is it that doesn't look real? What isn't working? And you'll notice little things and that's what you're doing. The more you paint and I do it, it's just really a lot of fun to continually be challenging yourself to um, 
to capture all those little subtleties that make up, in this case, these rocks. Because these rocks are so beautiful. So it's kind of like me paying a homage to, uh, to nature. You know, the beautiful rocks. I'm really, because I love these rocks, that's why I've chosen to paint them. That's another thing which I haven't mentioned. I believe it's really important to paint what you love. And at the same time, learn to love, find beauty in more things. I tend to be really fascinated with the way sunlight hits things. So just about all my paintings, one of the things they have in common is they all have uh, strong sunlight. Or not necessarily strong, but definite um, special effects, the way the sunlight is hitting something. In this case, the, hitting these rocks and when I get into it, the water. And I just find that so beautiful and so fascinating. And so when I'm out taking pictures, and as I'm painting, I want to try and capture that feel of sunlight hitting these rocks. And if you can see it on this painting, actually, I'm continually working making the darks darker and the lights lighter. So there's areas that I just hit, like right along here, with a very light beige color, here, here, and here. And that makes it look like sunlight's hitting them. And after I do... Uh, these rocks in here, I will do the same thing on some of these rocks. You don't want to overdo it. I, I tend to have a process where I'll add, in this case, darks, and then I'll tone them down. And let me show you, now that I've thought of that, let me show you a little trick. One of the, it's a more advanced trick than technique that I use. So let me, um, I'm going to do some dark lines. And then the, how do you soften those? So let me do this area here. I'm basically just going over the lines that I've done before and I want to make them darker. And they look a little bit too much the same. So I've got to look carefully at the photograph and go, well, what is, what is it? There's some that are more in shadows here. What is it about the photograph, the rocks in the photograph that look more real or why are they different than my painting? What is it that I'm not seeing? And if you look carefully, you'll see little things like little, dit, 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 dit. little areas that where there's lines going in or might be line going like this. Okay, so let's say I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to soften things. Let's say I want to do some lines in this rock like this. And uh, let's say I want them real subtle. Well, in this case, so far they're not, well, they're somewhat subtle, but let's say I want to soften those. And I use this technique all the time. So let's say I got a bunch of lines here. Let me do a few more and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's see here. Let's do a couple more like this. Okay, so what I do, I'm rinsing my brush out. I quite often will rinse my brushes out in the odorless mineral spirits. I have two little tins with one with linseed oil and one with Odorous mineral, mineral spirits. Okay, so this is a, a, a type of brush. I use these. This is the large version of it, and here's the small version. I can do this with either one in this case, but uh, what I find, one of the techniques that works really well to make things look very real is uh, softening the edges. So every time you do a painting, if you look you know, under a magnifying glass, this has very uh, hard edges. You can see it's a very definite line. Now, if I want to just gently go over it with this brush. See how it softens it? It's one of the coolest things. So I can make those, the more I just gently brush the top of these lines with this brush, the more the fade. So I can make them completely fade away or just make them very, very faint. Because in the photograph, there are some lines on the rock, but they're very faint. So that's one of the best tricks um, that you can learn now let's say these right here, I actually like them the way they are, but let's say I wanted to soften them up a bit. Oh, just very lightly. I'm just barely touching the top. And where there's a lot of paint, like in this dark area, I gotta be real careful. If I brush it too much, it's gonna spread maybe into a larger area than I want. So right now I wanna keep it in the same basic area. I just wanna soften it up a bit. Look at that though. You might not be able to see it uh, for this fine detail, but Anything that I've just painted that's still a little wet, like right here, I can go over it with this brush and soften it up. And hopefully you can see the difference. But 
that's something to incorporate if you like uh, making things look real learning how to soften your edges is one of the most I think most powerful uh, tricks or tools or techniques let's say that you can use to make your paintings look more real because uh, if you really want to look at a very very super realistic painting look at the best pastel artists in the world and because they're done with a soft powdery chalk they just about never have hard edges which makes them look very very smooth and usually a good artist that does pastels they're incredibly realistic uh, I don't like working in pastels for a lot of reasons. One of the main ones is that when you're done, you have a very fragile piece of artwork. No offense, my pastel friends. Um, but when you're done in oil painting, you don't have to put glass in front of it. It's very, very durable. Uh, you can usually sell them for more if that's an issue for you. Uh, but there's just many, many reasons why working in oil is, I think, just so much more efficient. Um, anyway, but the pastel artists... They just about never have hard edges, just the nature of a pastel because it's soft. Um, the work is incredible. So what I do is I create that same kind of feel with this type of brush, softening all the edges as I go through the painting in each stage. Um, this isn't softened, of course, because this is the felt pen that I used that you can actually see through the paint now. But ideally, so now I'm going to soften them, use the same brush, and I soften. This is a, a very thin layer of the dark it's got a lot of linseed oil in um, and sometimes that's good and sometimes it's not you have to play around with uh, when you apply some paint and it's thin in this case I'm gonna use the bigger the bigger softener see this big one there's very little paint on there so it's not really going very far if you know what I mean it's not being spread across the canvas that much um, but with obviously with bigger areas using this bigger brush is more expedient more effective. Okay, so I'm just going to soften all these little washes that I did. Might even, let's see. Oh, kind of like that. Now, I don't need to do that necessarily, but I don't want any, at this point right now anyway, I don't want any hard edges on these washes. Although it would kind of look cool on these rocks because the rocks do have these uh, discolor or discolorations, these color patterns kind of all throughout them and a lot of them do have hard edges but I want to create those intentionally um, rather than uh, having them show up right now okay so I'm looking at uh, my photograph and there's more detail with all of these areas so now I'm going to go back in with my liner brush I could use a bigger brush but Sometimes I really like the effect of getting that really fine detail. So I'm going to go in here. Really um, looking, noticing. My photograph's not that good. I can't actually see in the shadows here that I'm painting. But I know, because I painted this before, and you can look at other areas, that this is actually layers and layers upon layers of... Um, I can't remember if it is called sandstone or not, but it's such... Uh, amazingly beautiful rock that I really like that's half the reason for me to paint those is to get these layers to paint the scene is because uh, it's really cool I think to, to get these layers in that's half the beauty of them so I don't want to leave I want to give myself every opportunity to capture the beauty of the layers of these rocks my friend Bob Ross would say look at these happy rocks they're so happy here being laying here and being splashed by water for Hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of years. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back in, and the, there's layers in here. Sometimes you can go really fast, especially with uh, nature. You know, once you get a feel for, okay, this kind of movement with this paint in this direction um, makes it look good. So that once you get a feel for that, sometimes going fast is good because it kind of bypasses our tendency to make things look conformed and uh, so sometimes I'm painting rocks I go really well anything um, rocks trees um, there's a number of things in nature that once you kind of get a feel for what kind of line and movement and, uh, that you need that going fast will make it easier for you to not to uh, have contrived movements if that makes sense you know where everything looks the same you don't want everything looked the same. Sometimes when you move fast, 
You don't have time to make it look the same. You're just going kind of crazy. Woo, there we go, all over the all over the canvas. And sometimes I use that as a kind of a technique. And sometimes it's fun. Sometimes I'm very, very like, you know, you can probably notice that already. There are times when I go very, very exact. I know exactly what I want to create. And going slowly and carefully is going to allow me to do that. And then there are other times when I just like cruise along, go really fast. It's nice to have, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that I'm continuing to learn is that rather than just learning one or two techniques for something, learn as many as you can because you never know what technique is going to be best for that particular situation that you're in or the mood you're in or, you know, the effect you want to create. So uh, I have learned many, many, many techniques over the years doing this for so long. And I'm just an avid student. I learned from every artist. You know, if there's a good realist on the planet, I've <laughs> every time I think I've seen them all, I, I discover some new ones, so it's probably impossible to know about all of them, but I have uh, hundreds of the best artists in the world saved on my computer as a favorite, and I continually look at what they're creating and how they create it, and, and I believe every time we look at a painting, we learn something. I mean, I do, and if you want to, you can take that on yourself. Say, what is it about this painting that makes it incredibly beautiful or real or whatever? How'd they do the grass? Look how they did the, the light on the waves or whatever it is. And asking yourself those questions, like, how would I paint? Oh, that was another fun technique. Someone said that when you're out looking at anything or in photographs or in nature, or whatever, how would I paint that? Or, you know, what color is that? How would I mix that color? Or how would I create that illusion of of cracks on a rock or whatever it might be. Now here on these rocks, I, I'm looking down and I'm going, you know what, I think that's just a little bit too, it's a little bit too busy. I, I mean, there's too much going on there. It kind of distracts because it should be in shadows. So I'm taking that brush and I'm, I'm brushing it uh, gently across the surface of it. Maybe sometimes up and down, sometimes sideways and just going slowly and just seeing, okay, at what point is that enough? I don't want to do it too much, which is not a big deal in this case because I can paint over and add more detail. But at what point, I have to sometimes step back and look and say, what point have I achieved that? I think I'm going to need to go back. Well, I usually am. I go back in and add more darks, sometimes many, many times in an area. And, you know, everyone has their own path with everything in life. And as an artist, I'm learning uh, more and more that that it can be really fun to spend a lot of time, you know, creating the detail in a rock or whatever it is. And other times I think, you know what, I'm, I, that looks good enough for now and I'm going to move on. And that's more fun for right now. Uh, both are valid. Um, and sometimes you'll go back and forth. I go definitely back and forth. Sometimes I, I tend to want to just leave it and just give you the feel of the particular rock in an area and other times I go no I want to really get all that detail or a lot of it anyway okay so let's see I'll do some more okay now I'm going to show you doing some detail with one of my favorite brushes which I've talked about many times and that's this flat brush so it has a um, a flat end dipping it in my dark color This is a, I think the paint is just a little more watery than I really want at this time. But I'm just gonna, rather than mix the paint right now, I'm just gonna continue to use it just the way it is. The more, oh, I got a hair on my canvas there. Um, the more you paint, the more you understand um, what brushes to use, how thin, and thick, thin, or thick, <coughs> that you, you want to have your paint. And you'll probably, because you gain more knowledge with that, it gives you more freedom. Um, you may notice that you're painting along and you don't, uh, you don't necessarily think the paint is the right consistency, but because you've worked with it before, you can just quickly adapt and uh, just use it the way it is. 
And other times you go, no, you know what, I'm just going to mix up a little more paint, add a little more paint to it so it's not so thin and runny. Um, whatever works for you. Okay, so I'm going to move my painting over here. I'll take this dark. Now here's an area, there's a lot of dark. So having this big brush is way better than using that little liner. I say better, it's quicker and easier. There isn't necessarily better in the world of art. More efficient. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and darken up this whole edge because it's in the shadows. Actually, there's a few places that the sunlight hits, especially.